There is no word in our language that describes what autism is, and we don't know what it is. I have never heard of autism before. It is not something I was aware existed in my country. This is the first time I heard of it, and I don't know what it is. There is no word for autism in the Somali language. We do not know what it is. This is the first time we heard of autism. The word autism is the English word. There's no word or any way to describe in Somali what it is. I have heard of autism only in this country. My name is Hibo Ali Ahmed. I have two girls with autism. Their names are Fueda and Taslim, seven years old and four years old. They have autism. I have not heard of autism before. This was the first time I saw someone with autism. I haven't seen a child like this with the neighbors or people I know. My name is Marian Hassan. I have a son with autism. His name is Abdirahman Noor. He's now 16 years old. At the beginning, everything was really hard. I did not understand the illness. Everything was so hard. I went through really difficult times. But now I am beginning to understand what's wrong with him. But before, I had no understanding of the illness and what it was. It was a really dark time. My name is Amina Mahamud Abdi, known as Moki. My son's name is Munasir, and he is 12 years old. An appointment has been arranged in four weeks to see the pediatrician. When I saw the specialist, she has given my son some toys and then she watched him and said he has autism. My name is Saeed Hassan Mahmoud. My son is called Mus'ab Saeed Hassan Mahmoud. He's 10 years old. We contacted the doctors when he was around two years. The doctors then arranged a specialist. Then we went to the doctors to see her. She started doing her assessment in different ways. Her chest kept moving. I found in the process he keep running around different places. He wasn't subtle. Then she said he had autism. When the doctors told me my daughter had autism, I was so confused I had no idea what that meant. Then I was told she's going to live with autism with the rest of her life. I felt lost. I was heartbroken. I had no choice but to be strong and do everything I can for my son. I worry about him more than any of my other children. All my other children are very independent. 
they can catch the buses. You don't worry about them, about their life, but you worry about him all his life. You worry where he's going to go, what he's doing on his own. You don't know what he's going to do. My son causes the police in the area to know me. All the area police know me and my son. He used to be up all night. One night, a neighbor saw a child standing at a window all night, and so the neighbor called the police. People thought I was a mum who was a loser. When the police came round, they asked me why your son is standing at a window naked. I explained, he has autism. When I try to sleep, he stays up all night, He's standing on the window. And then the police started looking around the house and saw my other children. They could see all the other children sleeping in their beds. There's been a lot of interest about autism within Somali communities from different parts of the world. Um, so this includes uh, uh, evidence from Stockholm in Sweden, uh, in Minnesota, London, Bristol, now the Netherlands, uh, where communities have noticed that there might be something going on in terms of higher rates of uh, autism in the community. And uh, likewise, clinicians and researchers have noted that too. Now, there's been very little, traditionally, there was very little research on migrants and ethnic minorities in relation to autism because it's such a rare condition. Uh, large studies hadn't been carried out. Uh, but over the last decade, a number of them have been carried out. And there's now increasing evidence that uh, uh, the rates of autism in some migrant communities, and particularly the Somali community, are higher than uh, the non-migrant communities. <laughs> My family and friends were shocked. They can see he was different and was not like the other older children. They were confused and just shocked. You know the Somalis, they can call you names to the point where someone I did not expect said, I had a crazy child and there's the others that come to your house and see your child. And then they are surprised and say, is that your child that was ill who seems so able? Well, why not? The child has hands and legs. What people say kills your morale. It seems our people have wrong understanding of autism, as if health is in their hands. We are responsible for our son. Myself and his mum were happy the way he is. Allah gave him to us. I really don't care what people say. I just ignore them. They say things like that boy is not talking. He is deaf. The least they could say is that he has autism. Instead, they say he's deaf. That is not fair description of him. They say hurtful things to describe your child. I think there's a lot of stigma associated with autism in um, the Somalian population. Um, there's quite a big belief that it doesn't exist at home and that this is maybe a a Western disease. Maybe if it doesn't exist at home, it's infectious. I think there's a huge um, group of different um, belief systems. Also, um, the, the, the idea, is this a mental health issue or is this a developmental issue? What does that actually mean it can be quite difficult for families to sort of work out in their own mind. And there is a very high level of stigma associated with mental illness. So um, that may well be adding into the difficulties that um, families experience. When my son Saki was diagnosed with autism, um, I have not heard of the condition um, and it was difficult to explain to my community 
what autism is. The closest interpretation I did was mental illness, and that came with um, social exclusion. I think it's really important for for all professionals to know the, the, the cultural difference and the barriers that this community is facing. Um, I think we all know and understand professionally about autism, but I think it's really, I know that I've had to learn more about how it is within the community. And so there's the barriers are lack of concept and understanding of the condition, lack of language, um, sort of language barriers, um, and barriers with the system. So you have been, your child has been given a diagnosis of autism. What happens next? Where do I go? Who do I go to? What do I do? What does this mean? So, you know, going through the normal process, like any other child um, that has been given a diagnosis, you, so you go through that grieving process. But then for Somali families, it's then not knowing what to do next. And then they have got the challenge of dealing with the community. So that would be, you know, you have got this pride that, you know, you have to have this important family face to look after. And then you have been given a child who has got a diagnosis that is very close to mental illness. And so because of the stigma with mental illness, people try and hide and not talk about it. And that is very difficult. <laughs> When I moved to the country, I was trying to get hold of social services, but I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going to happen. We do not seem to understand each other. When I had all the problems with my son sleeping, I had a social worker, but my social worker used to say I can't take him somewhere called respite. My understanding of respite was I would lose my son when he says she's going to take him somewhere else called respite. I used to get upset, and then he used to say no, I didn't need anything from you. If only would have said they can arrange support in the house, then yes, there was no way I can send him off somewhere. I can't sleep without not seeing him. I could not keep my other children and send him off somewhere. If I understood respite the way I did now, and I would have used it. I understood that time as if my child is taken away from me. I could not allow my son to be taken away from me while I'm alive that I thought it is easier to suffer. I have been so overwhelmed with everything that has been happening. There are appointments that were made for the girls, but I forgot, so did not attend. So there has been mixed messages and take-ons when it came come to social worker in the community and the families we have been working with. So we have got quite a large number that would not access social workers only because um, the fear of social services will take um, their child away. When they have contact with social services, um, and of course a lot would, do, would be to do the fact that there is a language barrier and that it's not easy for them to pick the phone up and say this is what the problem is. Sometimes they might not want to talk about what the reality is with again with the with the fear of their child be taken away, but also not knowing what the hold of actually social services is. One of the main focuses and solutions was um, actually following a um, consultation that um, Bristol City Council did as part of the short break consultation. They did a one day event with the Somali community and it was really well attended, which was fantastic to see. And as part of that, we did some workshops, so we were reaching out to the families, asking them what they wanted, what was the barriers stopping them accessing the service. Um, we try and to do is to have drop-in sessions in, in our office um, and with somebody coming from social services um, and normalising social services are there to help you um, and that we, we you know we ha only had a first session and that was really successful the, the Somalian link workers are um, 
we've got two who work very closely with us and they are incredibly wise, brilliant women. And I must admit that um, I always feel as though the um, consultation is hugely better quality if one of um, the, the link workers are involved. So the service I provide is um, providing family learning courses for autism. And we've been very aware that um, a number of Somali families find it difficult to access or understand um, the autism content in those courses. So one of the things that we did was working with Neuro and Autism Independence is to adapt those resources so that it met the needs and their understanding of, of the Somali community. So that was working with the content, looking at uh, translating the materials, looking at changing some of um, some of the format so that it was more accessible. I think one of the biggest things was taking it the course to a venue that they felt comfortable going to, and that also um, that somebody from their community was leading the course that they they trusted and had confidence in. So that I think for us was a a big result because when we first initially piloted the course, adapting the course into um, a Somali autism course. We had very little take up, but since changing and since going to events in the community, we've now had perhaps a 70% increase in the number of families that are accessing the courses. <laughs> The only help I was getting was from this school. They supported me to get help. They used to look after my son sometimes. They gave me extra support when it was holiday times. They were very supportive. No one else helped me, not even family or friends. Well, my family is not even in this country. I had to become friends now with the autism community, my family and my community, and now families who have autistic children, they are my people. So I think when a child first comes into school and they are beginning to struggle and we are seeing that they're not, they're, there's gaps between them and their peers and, and there's difficulties, um, and you start talking to a family, um, you have to be very sensitive. They do automatically, quite a few families we've worked with, look at alternatives. Um, is there something else that I can do? Is there a cure? Is there this? Is there that? So it is building up trust, getting to know a family really well. Um, going to, you know, if you're saying I've, we want to get an expert opinion, say a speech and language therapist, it's going to those appointments because that's quite scary to go to an outside agency, to a professional that might be sitting in a, a medical um, environment to go actually go. So it, you're going with them to those appointments, going with them to paediatrician's appointments. So you're almost holding hands and saying, we're going through this home and school together. So for the for the best outcome for the child, it's not so that we can get a label, it's so that we can educate and get the best provision to support your child. Two months later, he started to read books in French's academy. That goes to show you the school he's going is a school who has professionals and is skilled for children with autism. He was much calmer. Before all the time, his mother would hold his hands, taking him to school, because I work most of the time. But now, in his new school, he goes down himself in the taxi. He made so much progress. Uh, the type of young people that attend uh, Ventures Academy, um, they all have autism as a, as a primary need. A uh, majority of children do come from Bristol, uh, a range of cultural backgrounds. Uh, at the moment, we are not far off 40% of our children um, come from the Somali population. 
Um, quite a few of those um, young people are first generation um, being, being in this country. And I would say approximately um, half of those young people that do attend here from the Somali population are deemed to be non-verbal. Um, the kind of provision that, that we have here at Ventures Academy I think is quite unique to the region. Um, clearly all the staff members are highly skilled, highly trained in dealing with young people with autism, but we do have clinical experts here in speech and language therapy. We have clinical expertise in occupational therapy and we have a range of, of professionals who are clinically trained um, um, in the world of mental health and psychotherapy. And by bringing together these um, adults and professionals who are highly skilled, highly committed, working together shoulder by shoulder, the outcomes which we've already seen here in Ventures Academy is life transforming and that is really humbling to witness. Coming to Autism Independence Group, I have learned a lot of knowledge. I have learned things that I never heard of. What you learn from the group is that what other parents have done with their children and where to get help. You find people who are in the same boat and similar and this gives you confidence. The thing is, coming to the group means I am not different. Everyone at Autism Independence Group has a child with autism and so you are not alone. Everyone has different experience, which means they can share. And you say, oh, I have also seen that behavior, or other people have seen similar behavior with their children. I believe the key thing we need to do is enable families to be able to lead their life. Um, and a real example is my own personal position with my son you know uh, we don't have the resources to have somebody coming in and doing everything for us it's enabling educating empowering making parents feel that they can achieve beyond what they're dealing with um, and it's about looking the you know the well-being of the whole family when you can do things yourself you're able to do so many things and I think that is the approach I hope that every service would be looking at, you know, seeding, um, holding hands, but letting go when that family's ready. But that work need to go in beforehand until we get to that position. And that would save our society so much. What is it that we need that can change that family life? Obviously, now we uh, there's lots of research out there which is talking about increased rates, increased burden of um, autism in the Somali community. I think there's not so much out there in relation to solutions. What are we going to do next? Uh, so from a research perspective, we definitely need more research, uh, more applied research in seeing how can we um, overcome these barriers to help seeking behaviors? Uh, how can we overcome barriers in relation to assessments of children, even adults with autism? Uh, researchers and the community working together can be a very, very powerful combination as we have noticed in the past. So I really look forward that we, uh, to working further with Noura and Autism Independence uh, in answering some of these unanswered questions in the future. <laughs> you should do all you can and as much as you can which can make a huge difference to the child because catching them young is more effective my advice to you to people do all you can while they are young it does need to be quite a holistic approach um, and that's that's the beauty of knowing your community knowing the agencies and knowing who's out there because not everybody knows that there's autism independence or the you know independent speech therapies or play therapists that can all be pulled together to to for the good of the child and that family i am asking these people professionals to help us there are so many things we need help with i would also encourage other people to also seek help to go out there and get help and i hope that these people will help us I 
actually think it's much better to think of the um, autism as a difference and so it's a difference it's a neurodevelopmental difference the brain looks almost identical there are some subtle differences in the brain however the way it's connected is different and um, this means that many children and adults who are on the autism spectrum actually have very are very good at certain things. One of my thoughts and ideas is what we need is we need somewhere that families can go for perhaps a one day event or course. They can learn all they need to know about all the different agencies that can help support them, um, whether from education, from social care, from health, but also they can learn the tools that they may need um, to understand about autism as well. So my thoughts and ideas are that we develop a, a course to help support and signpost and ease some of the anxieties for families following that first diagnosis point that they, they receive, yeah. So through this co-produced research, we've already started to see impact and change. We've started to see the ways that it can raise awareness, both in the local community, amongst professional groups, um, and this might, we hope, will start to feed into changes in the way that services are delivered and that support is provided for families who quite desperately need it. So we really hope that this is going to lead to further changes um, and solutions that are very much focused on the lived experiences of families um, in the Somali community. We have a moral obligation to find a way to unlock that potential in the child, to find that little bit of magic that no one else has has quite done yet. My advice to other families who have a child with autism is to get everything that the child is entitled to while they are young so that the child gets more support. It's important that a child with autism gets support early on. So if you have a child at home, you need to consider that. I would like to say you take your child to a respite. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't go through the difficulties that we went through. I would say Allah brings illness. It's not in your hands. Allah also brings health. Nobody makes the child in their hands. But shouldn't be shy of what autism is. Nobody brought this illness to you. People ask if he has autism. I am not shy of my son's autism. He is my son. I love to see aspirations and expectations being at the heart of everything we do um, whether it's me sitting at the autism independence office or whether it's a commissioner who is sitting in city hall um, I think the key is we share that vision and that expectation for that child um, I like to see more of lived experience knowledge being used because we can use theory um, and we can have all these amazing um, qualifications, but if you don't live with that child, you would not come from their angle. Um, and I would love to see everybody take responsibility and everyone thinking of that child at the heart of everybody with the work they do. Adabti lahu kakuri.